Joner. Hey, what's up, Joners? B here with Joner Tech, and today I had to do it. I know I might be a little bit late to the party, but this is something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I want to talk to you guys about my feelings about, well, the Mavic 2 Pro versus the Mavic Air 2. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first is the thing that you're always gonna notice is the biggest difference between these two drones outside of the size of them is going to be the price. These drones are ridiculously different, pri differently priced because, well, one of them starts at about 800 and the other one is about 1500. Um, honestly, for my whole package for this drone, I'm just a little bit shy of $2,000 and this one, the $800, like I got the five more combo, it came with the, the uh, ND filters and all the things, and it was pretty good. And it, I didn't really see justify buying a controller like this, this the, the, the Pro Controller, that flies both of these drones actually, but this Pro Controller almost costs as much as this drone. So I didn't see a reason for getting it for this, but it does work well over here. So I'm well over $2,000 for this package, which does work well for this package as well, but unnecessary for either one of these drones. I just really wanted to get this. And also say that this does work for both of these drones, which is pretty fun. So I'm gonna take you guys through a couple of the categories associated with the drone that I noticed are things that are important to me as a pro drone pilot and then just let you know tell you guys what I think is the better deal for who first things first let's talk about just the aircraft itself and the build as you can see I mean the design of the Mavic series has not changed at all from pretty much since the original Mavic Pro you know the Mavic Air was a, a real departure because it was much smaller somewhat different design but the fold out and the look of these drones are pretty much identical um, what you get is what you see um, you say that backwards and it works. But obviously the Mavic Air is a little bit smaller. Like I've actually called this the Mavic 2 Pro uh, Lite many times before because it does not resemble in any way, shape or form the Mavic Air 1. It is significantly lighter um, than the Mavic 2 Pro, um, which might give it that extra three minutes flight time because this one comes in at about 31 minutes flight time. This one about 34. This one's a little bit faster just because obviously you have stronger rotors. Um, and maybe the momentum of it just being heavier works well. This obviously the bigger one works better in heavier wind situations, but you're probably not going to notice too big of a difference between them because, I mean, they both do the job when it comes to that. I will say flight handling, I do prefer the Mavic 2 Pro um, because it just feels more steady than the Mavic Air 2. I feel like there's more drift on this drone and you use two different apps to be able to fly them. This is the DJI Go 4 app and this one uses DJI Fly, um, which is the new DJI app that doesn't, it's very simple app. Um, it's easy, it's user friendly, but it's, not, it's more user friendly than DJI Go 4 but it also takes away a lot of the options of the things you can do. You can't really go in and adjust the Expo and the way that the drone flies specifically, you can't really adjust in the DJI Fly app, which you can do in the Go 4 app. So you just have a lot more versatility in being able to tweak and customize the way that this feels when it's in your hands. Versus this one, like I said, it feels drifty. Not so much when I say drifty, I don't mean like it's like you let you let go of the controller and it's just like moving in one way or another, kind of like the Phantoms were known for doing, especially the Inspire 1. And the Inspire 2 does it a lot too. But what I mean when I say drifty is like you start going in one direction, you let go of the controller, this mug just stops. You let it go, it's like bloop, it like puts on the brakes. This one on the other hand, it's like you go forward and you say go to the left, you're going to start going forward. It's going to keep going forward for a little bit longer, then it'll decide when it's going to start going left. It just feels like there's like a little bit of a drift in the kind of like the relay of the time that the control really sets in. At first I thought that was something that I was experiencing, but then I flew a couple more of these and had some other pilots fly it and they kind of agreed with me like, yo, like this does fly different than, than this one, but does it fly bad, poorly? By any stretch of imagination, no. It does not, I've just been spoiled um, by this, by flying the Inspire 2, the Inspire 1, the original Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, which is still my favorite drone um, to fly in general because it's just so fun and it's so little and it fits in everything. So next up, let's talk about the sensors on these drones. And I mean the sensors that allow them to know where they are in space as well as to be able to not run into things. The Mavic 2 Pro does actually have more sensors than the Mavic Air 2. When you look at it, you'll see them because you know you got the two on the front. Um, on the bottom here, you actually have two different sensing systems. I believe these two here are like the sonar that ping the ground and then these other two are light sensors uh, in between. This one only has one light sensor and then the two that ping the ground. Uh, as well as this, this actually is the light in the middle here that shines up. These are the lights that shine down while it's trying to find the ground when there's not that much light below it, which is pretty cool. Um, you have the sensors on the bottom there, but overall it does look very similar. Like you said, you got the two sensors on the back, you got sensors on the sides. I think this has a, two more sensors in this sense, this one, but um, this one is newer. It's much newer. This one came out. Uh, this one came out this year. This one came out in 2018, and so this actually has Active Track 3.0 technology for more reliable oxygen avoidance through subject recognition. So it might have less sensors, but the sensors get better use from the firmware that they are using, as well as the type of sensors that they are. It also has one more one up: the ADBS8 signals from nearby airplanes and helicopters, which is called 
AirSense, which allows you to know when there is another aircraft in this, the airspace. It'll give you a warning while you're flying, which has happened to me before. It's kind of annoying because it's like, there's an airplane at 27,000 feet. You know, it doesn't tell you that, but it's like, it'll just give you a warning for an airplane. And you're like, where? You know, and you look around, it's like, I guess it's coming. And then a few minutes later, like, oh, there it is. So it does help you, it gives you the heads up. And when you have like low, when you're flying specifically on the coastal coastlines, a lot of times helicopters will be flying a lot lower and planes will fly a lot lower because they want to get closer to get a better view. So you'll get a heads up when they're coming down the, the coast to be able to help you out. So that's a big, a big plus for this one that this one does not have, but it's not an issue that I've honestly ever run into. You're always supposed to fly with a visual observer anyway, especially when you're a pro pilot like me. So that has never been a real concern, but for hobbyist pilots, maybe that's a plus. So I'm just gonna run down a quick list of all the things that you're like, that are just kind of direct comparison. So you can just for yourself know what the difference is. Obviously I said this one is heavier. It is significantly heavier. This one is 900 grams to so about the 570. This one flies at about 44 and, a, 44 and a half miles per hour, only 42 and a half. This one, 31 minutes flight time, 34. Max flight distance is about the same, 11.2 uh, miles. This one's 11.5. Why does anybody care? Visual line of sight is much shorter than that. But that is, for image transmission, when you get into places with high frequency and a lot of radio signals and things like that blocking, the more distance you have in general means that you're, the less likelihood that you'll get interrupted by those signals, so that does help. But it's so similar, I pretty much call that a tie. They both have the same amount of internal storage of eight gigabytes and the same amount of external storage allowed inside, which is 265, 260, 256 gigabytes of a, of a micro SD card, which is more than you'll ever need for any one individual flight. The biggest difference between these that really matters for someone like me is the camera. You have the one inch versus the half inch sensors here. And that honestly just gives you the color space and the spectrum that's just really so much better and so much more vivid over here. But over here, you don't have 4K 60. That's uh, shooting at a resolution of 4, 4K versus the resolution uh, at 24 frames or 30 frames per second. And this one actually can shoot in 60 frames per second, which gives you at higher speeds and things like that, a little bit, a lot more ability to slow things down and see a lot more of the detail as you're flying at high speeds and things are happening at fly speeds, high speeds, which I thought was really interesting when it came out. I was like, how does this drone cost half as much, half as, much as this one, but can do something this one can't with the 4K 60. I've never ne needed 4K 60 on my drone because normally that's kind of what I use for like FPV flying and all that. But it's really nice to have sometimes you're like, oh, I'm chasing a race car or something like that. Then it's like, okay, maybe that's what you want to do. But seriously, like that's the one thing that really, I was like, okay, that's, that's impressive no matter how you look at it. The max photo size, actually this one's even edges out this one is that you can get an 8,000 by 6,000 pixels versus this one is about 5,500 5, by 3,500. They both shoot in the same format, which can end up being raw. Um, I already told you guys about the, the 4K60 and all that. And the max bit rate on this drone is actually 100 bits, uh, megabits per second. And this one is 120. So it actually can sh write a little bit faster, which is how you get to that 4K60. Overall, it's kind of like a wash, depending on what you want to do when it comes to the camera specifically of these drones. If I still, as a professional, I'm going to pick a camera, picking that camera. But sometimes in very specific instances, I might want to take this camera. Um, just because of the you know the higher bit rate and the uh, higher frame rate, but in general, you got it, you got it, baby, you got it over here. Also, when you are talking about being a beginner, this drone has a lot more uh, embedded flight modes that it can do that this one cannot, um, which is a big deal. Um, so like you can do like the active track, like I said earlier. Um, it can do the asteroid, helix, boomerang, rocket, circle, course rock, port of interest, waypoints, all the stuff that this one can do, plus a couple more. But the biggest one is the. Uh, the, uh, the Active Track 3.0 and the Point of Interest, which just is a, high, a better version of the ones that this one has. I don't use any autonomous flight features for the most part, except for occasionally I'll make the Asteroid video or something like that, which is originated on the uh, Mavic Air original. Shout out to you, Mavic Air, I love you. So that's really the big differences between these two drones. In flying them, I already told you guys that I do prefer to fly this drone over this one. Now, who, what drone should you buy? That's the real question that you really are here to know. From a professional drone cinematographer, which drone do I recommend that you buy for your use? Well, the fun part about that is I'm just gonna ask you back a question. What are you using it for? If you're gonna be using it for movies, television, or any kind of high quality stuff where you need to be matching bigger cameras like Canon C300s or Alexa Minis or Sony FS7s or anything like that, and like, yo, I gotta get the wide shot for that, but we gotta shoot it in a flat color space in the log so they can color it back and not really tell the difference between that drone, that camera and this camera, um, then you're not gonna use any of these drones. You're gonna use an Inspire. But if you gotta pick between the two of these, this one definitely is better, significantly better for doing things like that. When it comes 
comes to having this Hasselblad glass and the one inch sensor, you're just getting more information, more, just more imagery for your buck. That was poorly phrased to go over here and say that if you're a hobbyist, if you're wanting to learn how to be a professional drone cinematographer, if you're doing this for, for real estate, if you're doing this for your friends, if you're doing this for Instagram, if you're doing this for your YouTube channel, if you're doing this for anything outside of professional work, this drone is everything you need and then some. Like I said, 4K60, does shoot 4K regular, has every kind of flight mode you could ever want, has a crazy long flight time, so you don't even need to buy that many batteries, has a really long image transmission, like, so you probably won't have any image issues. Yeah, there's a little bit of drift on it, but you can compensate that after you get to learn how to fly it and start flying this one consistently. It's pretty solid, and specifically looking at the price difference, saying you can get everything you need for this drone for $800 versus this is more than double that. It's not even close to me. Like, if you're not doing professional stuff, you gotta get the Mavic Air too. Um, this drone is significantly better. This is m way more bang for your buck when it comes to just like what each individual dollar gets you when you buy this. Um, but if you are a pro and you're here to do this because you wanna be serious and buy things that are toys that you don't really necessarily need but do help you do your job slightly more efficiently and really drop the money to be able to get the highest quality product for your, con for your client, then you gotta go with the pro. Because this, this baby is the industry standard when it comes to foldable drones that you can throw into your backpack and be able to get really high quality cinematic footage. But you gotta, I gotta give my hats off to the Mavic Air 2. What they fit, the technology they fit into this drone is unsurpassed, it is unreasonable, and it's impressive. Depending on what you wanna do, you honestly can't go wrong unless you don't have enough money. You need this, you don't have enough money. I promise you, you'll still be happy over here. So you can't really lose in this situation, but that gives you my breakdown and comparison just on paper of what the difference is between these drones and the experiences that I've had with both. What do you think? What would you say is the biggest difference between these drones? What would you say are the biggest reasons you'd buy this over this? And what would you say that I may have missed talking about that could be a really important factor between buying this one, this one, or maybe something else? Let me know in the comment section below. Hey Droners, thank you guys so much for checking out this comparison type video of these two amazing drones. If you wanna see more videos like this, well, just, just let me know in the comments, or you can watch the videos I've already made that are like this. Uh, please like, sh like, share, subscribe, do all the things to let us know that you care and you want us to keep making content like this. And as always, make sure you stay fly. Peace.